I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Petchus, if you'd please take the roll. Commissioner Eggleston? Here. Commissioner Barnes? Here. Commissioner Brown? Here. Chair Darden? Here. Commissioner Crandall? Here. Commissioner Rulin? Here. And Commissioner Smith? Here. Okay, under special orders of business, um, we have a closed session report from the city attorney. Uh, there's no reportable action today. Okay, thank you. And then uh, the second item on the agenda is a selection of design review subcommittee alternate. Uh, do we have any motions for uh, a replacement for uh, Commissioner Smith? As chair of the uh, design review subcommittee, I would like to nominate Wayne Eagleston as our alternate member. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think you'll be an excellent addition, Wayne. You bring a lot of experience, and um, we've also had the good fortune of having you attend as a private citizen or in other capacities a lot of our meetings. So you'll be able to hit the ground run running. Welcome. Thank you. All right. Uh, that brings us to uh, the minutes. Uh, we have two sets of minutes, one from the study session of January 21st. Uh, 2015 and may I compliment our recording secretary those were really really helpful um, and very detailed uh, minutes from that session does anybody have any changes or is there a motion I need to recuse because I was not here thank you Wayne I'll move to approve the study session minutes Second. all in favor aye, aye. Okay, then we have a second set of minutes. C Commissioner from, Barnes should abstain because she wasn't present at that meeting. Uh, no, she was. Oh, she was? Oh, uh -huh. oh sorry. No. My first you meeting so with you, so not have, your it's, first. It's uh, six with one abstention, but it's Commissioner Eggleston. All right, and then um, so the minutes from the regular meeting of the Planning Commission of January 21st, 2015. Do we have any changes or a motion? I need to recuse myself. Okay. Any changes? If there are no changes, I'll move we approve. All second. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And one abstention. So that's six and one abstention. All right. That mo uh, brings us to oral and written communication. At this point, members of the audience may address the commission on matters of public interest which pertain to the city and are not otherwise on the agenda. If you wish to speak, please step forward to the microphone, state your name and city of residence, and make your presentations. Please limit your presentations to three minutes. Seeing no one step forward and seeing no cards, uh, we will move on uh, to the next items on our agenda, which will be the public hearings. The public hearing process includes a staff presentation, a presentation by the applicant not to exceed 10 minutes, and public testimony. To facilitate the meeting for all attendees, the public is asked to limit their individual presentation to three minutes. Following closure of the public hearing, the Planning Commission will respond to questions raised during the hearing, discuss the issues, and act upon the matter by motion. The first item on our agenda tonight uh, is uh, item 8A209. Um, uh, 209 Avenida La Cuesta, Cultural Heritage Permit 14-107, Minor Exception Permit 14-401, McIlvain Residence. And I believe Jim is going to give the priest. Uh, staff is requesting that this item be uh, tabled for now because we're still working out some design details. We need to go back to the design review to address those issues. Okay, I move that uh, Planning Commission table uh, Cultures, cultural Heritage Permit 14-107, Minor Exception Permit 14-471, McIlvain Residence, 209 Avenue, La Cuesta, uh, until all issues are addressed, addressed by my staff. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, passes 7-0. That brings us to uh, item uh, 8B, um, 1880 North El Camino Real, variance 14-474, conditional use permit 14-475, Capistrano Shores Wall and Landscaping. Amber Gray. Good evening, Planning Commissioners. Amber Gray, Project Planner. As uh, Chair Darden just said, there's actually two applications associated with this. Staff will be giving one presentation, though, in order to have a comprehensive analysis and the integration between the projects. 
But first, to kind of orient ourselves, this project has to do with the Capistrano Shores Mobile Home Park. That um, development is located just north of the intersection of Avenida Pico and North El Camino Real and runs approximately 3,615 feet um, along the shoreline in that area. Uh, the project is depicted by the green line that's in the illustration above. So the applications are for uh, what we'll identify as phase one and phase two, which is how it is in your staff report as well as throughout this presentation. So the first phase is uh, to place seven transformers as well as temporary fencing. And the second phase is to construct a permanent wall, accessory structures, decorative paving, and landscaping um, for uh, the development. But a little bit of background first, Capistrano Shores desires to upgrade their utilities. They're actually in the process of doing that right now. Several of you have probably been out there and uh, seen those improvements currently going on. They do have approvals for those developments. Um, after they received approval from the city in order to do those utility upgrades, however, they were currently in negotiations with OCTA in order to extend uh, their leased area into, their, into the railroad right-of-way. After obtaining the permits, they did get approval from OCTA and they modified the lease. And now the applicant would like to move those transformers from the west side of the fence line, where they currently have approval, to the east side of the fence line into the newly acquired area. Due to time constraints, the applicant has asked that you look at the applications concurrently. That way they would be able to uh, place the transformers in the timely manner and the construction schedule that they're trying to keep. So in summary of the applications, it's for seven transformers on the east side of the fence line. Uh, they will be installing temporary fencings around the enclosures that would match the existing fence line. And then after that, they would inst uh, install a permanent decorative block wall that is proposed to be eight feet in height along with the accessory structures and other improvements. So phase one, here's an illustration that shows the new chain link fence projections that would uh, be placed there. The fence line is currently a straight fence line, and so these would be projections that would pop out um, in that area. They're seven feet uh, wide by 13 feet long. Uh, the existing fence line that's there currently works as a barrier to help uh, keep the citizens safe that are located in the Capstone Shores Mobile Home Park from the railroad right of way. So the phase two consists of a construction of a proposed eight foot wall. Uh, the applicant has provided preliminary designs that have been included in your staff report that include a smooth Spanish, uh, a smooth Spanish colonial style wall with landscaping. In your staff report, it does state that uh, we would desire landscaping on the east side of the wall and that there's a condition to get that from OCTA. The reason for that is because under the current lease agreement, OCTA did not allow for landscaping on the east side of the wall because of maintenance concerns. However, since then, the applicant has been able to get the um, OCTA to approve that landscaping, and a copy of that email is provided on the dais for your information. So the picture that we have here is actually the wall on the... Uh, west side of the property facing the mobile homes, but it would it's intended to match on the opposite side as well. At the main entrance, the applicant is proposing to have two entry monuments flanking the drive aisle. The height of those is proposed to be nine feet, nine inches, and would serve as a, as a monument sign as well. Signage is not a part of this application, but there is a condition of approval that says they would go through this sign application process as required by the zoning ordinance. Uh, in addition, the applicant's proposing 16 trash enclosures, decorative lighting, landscaping, hardscaping, and walkways. The picture on the bottom left is Santa de la Playa before the improvements. As you can see, it's pretty tight there with the cars parked um, in the amount of right-of-way that they currently have. On the right-hand side, they have the increased um, area that provides for a decorative walkway on the left-hand side of the picture, as well as the enhanced trash enclosures that also have the transformers within those enclosures as well. So analysis of the project. A conditional use permit is required for both the temporary fencing and the permanent wall and any accessories that are ever proposed within the open space. Um, with just the temporary fencing alone, this DUP cannot be supported uh, with, without being connected to a permanent wall because it doesn't meet the goals and policies of the general plan. So ensure, to ensure that the fence is in fact temporary, and to be able to make those findings stating that the applicant has intended to follow with the permanent wall um, in a timely manner, staff has included a number of conditions of approval to address that. 
Now, typically I don't go through the conditions of approval, but there are a couple that I'd like to highlight given um, the uniqueness of this project and the way it's being presented. So uh, the first condition is prior to the issuance of building permits to install the transformers, the applicant shall install an irrevocable line of credit or cash deposit to construct the landscaping and permanent decorative wall to replace the chain link fence. Uh, construction of the permanent decorative wall shall commence within one year uh, after permit issuance of the new transformers. The reason why within is bolded and italicized is because it's missing in your um, conditions of approval. So I would note that that would need to be included in there and I appreciate being uh, notified that, that by Commissioner Brown actually. Amber, what number of condition is that? Thank you. I think it's either 11 or 12. I can find it really. Yes, it is 11. You, I'm sorry, you found it already? Yeah, 11. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Um, but with the caveat that should construction of the permanent decorative wall not commence within one year of permit issuance for the transformers, uh, the city shall collect the line of credit um, or cash deposit and, and construct the wall for the applicant. Um, if it's, there's also a condition that allows for time extensions because sometimes we can't foresee how long it's going to take somebody to get through the process of other outside agencies like the Coastal Commission. So if um, the community development director or designee finds that the applicant has been trying to pursue those approvals, uh, there can be six month extensions if that is found. So in regard to the um, architectural permit, and the architectural permit is solely for the chain link fence portion uh, of the project. The temporary fencing, if it were to become permanent and the, con and the permanent wall were never to be constructed, would not comply with the findings of the general, or the findings or with the general plan. Um, however, with the proposed conditions ensuring that the fencing is actually temporary and the requirement that the permanent wall be Spanish colonial revival, then that permanent wall would meet the findings um, required by the uh, permit as well as the general plan. So the architectural permit uh, condition of approval is a final permanent decorative wall design. Accessory structures and subsequent improvements associated with the application shall be reviewed and approved by the design review subcommittee as well as the city planner designee in the form of a staff waiver of an architectural permit prior to building permit issuance. And finally, we get to the variance application. The project requires a variance because, as I stated, the uh, maximum height for a wall is six feet according to the zoning ordinance. Anything in excess of that does require a variance. And the applicant is proposing an eight-foot wall that reaches up to nine feet nine inches. So the zoning ordinance states that the purpose of the variance process is to provide relief from development standards and special circumstances. For a variance to be granted, special circumstances related to the property must exist which deprive the property owner of development privileges enjoyed by other property owners in the vicinity of the same zone. And the deprivation of these privileges must result in the hardship to the property owner. So staff analyzed the project site and has found that the property is unique because it is the only residential community that resides west of the railroad tracks, that the homes are approximately 60 to 70 feet from the railroad tracks. And although that is not in itself a unique situation because we do have homes in the city that are fairly close, if not closer, to the railroad tracks. Um, but in this case, the Capo Shores homes, in order to access it, you have to be within the railroad right away. And that is a unique situation than any of the other homes in the facility that you would access through a public road. Um, safety is also a concern. Uh, the applicant no CTA would like to see the safety improved. And that the wall will provide sound mitigation for the residents from the trains. Uh, the loss in railroad corridor is one of the busiest, and in fact, there's been significant increase in uh, traffic from trains on that corridor, and it's about 50 train trips per day currently right now. And so that was staff's findings or analysis. Um, in regards to the findings, the project is in a unique location, and which forces the daily activities of all the residents to be located within the railroad right-of-way. Uh, it would mitigate uh, noise generated by the increased train volume and the wall would improve the safety barrier and the design of the wall as proposed is also in keeping with the goals and policies and requirements of the general plan for gateways as well as um, Spanish colonial revival architecture. So that concludes staff's presentation and staff and the applicant are available to answer any questions. 
question here? Don, do you have a question? Yeah, do you yeah. have any data or on this sound mitigation, or is this just we think walls can help? Because we have issues in town here where we put a, a wall up, sound wall on the freeway down El Camino Real, and the people on the other side of the freeway had an increase in noise. So uh, do we have any analysis or any engineering or any data that would, uh, in fact, substantiate this particular finding? We do have some information as far as noise levels and analysis. We do not have a sound study. Staff had not required a sound study of the applicant. But we did find information um, on the Federal Administration of uh, Railways as far as what noise levels and DBAs are generated within a certain distance and proximity of the railroad tracks. And we also looked at the nearest neighbors, which in this case is going to be um, the new development of Marblehead Coastal when that actually gets constructed, as well as the Colony Cove development at the far um, north end of, of the development. So on your left-hand side, you have what the municipal code says is acceptable for exterior noise standards. And in a residential zone, during the day, it's 55 dBA, and in the evening hours, it's about 50 dBA. And on the right-hand side, you have a table taken out from the Federal uh, Railroad Administration that basically says what the typical dBA is for these types of actions on the right-hand side. And I think you can see on the screens in front of you, it's a little bit harder to read from where I am. But um, what it says is rail cars traveling at 50 miles per hour has an average DBA of 75 to 85, um, at a DBA range of 75 to 85. Now, the homes in, the, in this vicinity, the mobile homes, are located anywhere between 60 to 70 feet of the railroad tracks. So they're closer than the 100 feet within there. So by installing a wall, staff would anticipate that that would create a barrier and would stop the noise levels in that area. But, um, you know, we also had to look at horn noise from the trains. This project is located within a quiet zone. Luckily, that was established in the last several years, so the horn doesn't blow nearly as much as it did. But in looking at the horns, the horns do not face... Um, the wall, they do run parallel to the wall, so that would help a little bit with sound mitigation bouncing off the walls. And then we also looked at how close of a proximity the nearest homes were. So as a crow flies, the nearest home in, on the north end of Marblehead is approximately 525 feet. In the center portion, it's about 875 feet, and it ends up being even further down on this end. So in terms of noise attenuation and how it's going to travel um, up the side of the face, staff anticipated that given the DBA level of 75 to 80, even if that bounced off the wall at full volume, by the time it um, carries up here, we would anticipate diminishment of that sound. Again, we don't have a full sound analysis, but that was our assumption as we were reviewing the variance. And Jim, did you have a follow-up question on this issue? or Because I think otherwise don't. Yeah, I have a question on a different issue, so go ahead. If okay. You uh, well, um, do you have, uh, for the landscaping plan, not too much was discussed about that, but um, our general plan UD5 uh, requires an irrigation plan to go with this, and I was wondering if there's any recycled water being used with it, with our the new water conservation uh, project that's been going on. Um, there's a night. There's a beautiful plant palette, but there. Um, the only um, conditions I see is that about about tree canopies, um, not trimming them so that they can't have a tree canopy. Is there any height limitations as well? That's something that would be reviewed through subsequent to this uh, project. The way that the conditions of approval are written is that our city landscape architect, as well as the design subcommittee, will be reviewing the subsequent landscape plans. And when we do that, we would have to look at any of the impacts that the trees would have as far as height on the um, views from the Marblehead Coastal Trail. We want to be sensitive to that and make sure that they don't impede those. So that would be analyzed along with the design of the wall after this is how it's conditioned. In regards... Kind of in reverse. I'm sorry? A little bit in reverse. It is. It is. This. Uh, I should have explained in the background that the way that we are processing this application is a little bit in reverse. Typically, these issues are vetted during the design review subcommittee portion. However, the way that this is being presented in order to help uh, meet the applicant's time frame in order to set the transformers that they're looking to do, 
uh, we have asked that that be conditioned and that be reviewed and approved by the designer subcommittee as well as the city planner. But in, as re in regard to the landscape plans, it would also need to be reviewed by the city's landscape architect. And who it, is that? Pat Murphy is our. Oh, Pat it, Murphy. And um, Amber, the, um, the email that you provided us with on the dais, <clears throat> uh, I believe that says uh, that uh, the uh, one of the conditions for the uh, OCTA allowing vegetation um, is that um, it uh, has to be watered on the west side of the wall um, and then the vines are fed through. So, so it, that does indicate where um, irrigation would take place. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Jim, you had, I'm sorry, you had another question about the recycled water. I believe there's a standard condition of approval that says that they have to get it ready for recycled prop, uh, water. And in the event that the recycled water does become available, that they can connect into that system, they would be required to do so. Yeah, they're, they're, Thank you. Uh, yeah, we um, do we know if there is anyone, uh, any of the homes on the beach trail or continuing farther south along the, the railway, uh, if they currently have a variance for fence height? I do not know if any of them have a variance on the fence light. I do know from walking the trail, I didn't, you know, go out and, and do any kind of measuring tape. But there is a portion on the trail when you pass T Street, when you go south, and I'm sure, Jim, you're probably familiar with this too. When you're walking on the trail, there are homes that are higher and there are substantially tall walls along there. They don't provide a, a visual, a view barrier. It's just a, because of the elevation change from the public right of way to the back of how the topography slopes down of the ocean. But I don't know if those required or obtained a variance when they were constructed. Okay, thank you. But doesn't it, this, uh, excuse me, doesn't this zoning uh, variants apply to situations in the same zone or vicinity uh, and T Street is quite a bit of ways yes and in this case this project is very unique because there are no similar circumstances in the same zone with the same type of uses in there so this is only would apply to this zoning with this use so um, Amber just uh, in a follow-up to that um, if um, if somebody in the location that you were just talking about on the trail um, by T Street, if they applied uh, for a wall with a variance uh, and they used similar arguments about the, the noise, um, the proximity to the tracks, um, would staff um, be able to make the findings for that variance in that case? Or um, are the are the some of the additional circumstances uh, that make this development unique key to making those findings? That uh, interesting question, because <laughs> we have to look at each property based not only on, you know, its location, its vicinity, and its unique characteristics to those around them, but the individual zoning that that project is located in. So the other homes that um, are located in those areas are in a residential zone, not an open space zone. Um, they also don't have. Um, they do not have daily activities that occur within the public right away. We did look at that. Mm -hmm. So that's also another varying factor. So I can't sit up here and say, yes, we would support a, a variance on a, on a home or not. So we may be setting a precedent, but we may not be. That's correct. There are definitely distinctions and uniquenesses to these properties that other properties in the city do not have with the same use, maybe not the same zoning, but maybe the same residential use. Wayne? Well, there are homes in the Riviera District that are on the other side of the tracks, uh, and they're much closer to the railroad track, and there is activity in the public right-of-way um, uh, in the Riviera District. So, uh, you know, uh, you know it, I, I'm just concerned that, in fact, if we allow this, if we would then allow uh, the uh, construction of uh, walls in the Riviera District. So, I mean, that's, that's something that we yeah. really have to consider. And eight foot walls, in fact. I think the, uh, we might want to talk to the city attorney about you know, whether a variance in any sort and its potential to create a, a precedent of any uh, kind. Well, Is that a concern? I mean, it's similar to what Amber just talked about. Variances are based on the unique, proper, unique specification size topography of the property itself. So it's hard to say that issuing a variance in one situation would lead to a precedent for variances in other locations. 
you're looking at so many different factors. You're looking at how a property is situated with nearby properties. You're looking at the, the zone itself. So, I mean, staff has done a, a pretty extensive analysis about the uniqueness of this property. So, I, I don't think it necessarily sets a precedent that we would be allowing for variances in other locations. Okay. Um, I had a, an additional question about the landscaping and the, and the sound issue. Mm -hmm. um, did staff take into consideration uh, the vines? Um, oh, and you probably didn't because you ha yeah, haven't heard from say. OCTA yet. But mm -hmm. uh, would you expect that those would um, help attenuate some of the sound um, if, those, yes. if those are allowed to grow on the wall? Yes, they would. We, you know, once they actually fully grow in, it would absorb some of the sound. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there I, are I there other questions? A, another mm -hmm. qu did staff have any findings? Remember that all the five findings in the zoning code for a variance have to be satisfied, all of them. And I didn't see anything in the staff report uh, where, and the finding of hardship, where the condition of lacking necessities or comforts caused deprivation or suffering. If there were a six foot uh, fence, which is in the zoning code, as opposed to an eight foot fence. Did we analyze the sound attenuation difference between a six foot fence and an eight foot fence? Is what you're is, is that what you're asking? Uh, yes. Okay. That's partially. Okay. So um, with the six foot fence that is uh, proposed, uh, no, we did not run. We did not require a sound study of this project. Um, and we do not have any hard evidence that a six-foot fence would provide any less sound mitigation than an eight-foot fence. However, I would say that, um, you know, some of the units on the west side, and I don't want to, let's just discuss one-story mobile home units. Those are typically taller than six feet in height, um, but we didn't look at sound waves as far as going over and extending over above uh, the mobile home units. There are some mobile home units that are taller than one stories, and because of the height of a six foot versus an eight foot, we would definitely anticipate sound impacts being greater on those because of sound waves and how they travel. Um, did you, did the staff have any findings on the point five that the variance must be consistent with the general plan, uh, page C4, an implement, implementation of the Coastal Act? Or did they have any findings for any mitigations for putting an eight-foot uh, wall that's over three-quarters of a mile long? We do state that the project has to be approved by the California Coastal Commission, and in their approval, they would find that it would be compliant with the California Coastal Act. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Jim? Yeah. Um, what, since one of the conditions here involves uh, kind of a worst case scenario where the city might have to build the wall. Mm -hmm. um, does that require, I assume that would require, since that's in the uh, OCTA right of way, mm -hmm. right? So the city would need to get permission to build from OCTA. Yes. And we currently don't have that permission, is that correct? No, we don't have anything in writing, but what, what that condition of approval says is that we would enter into an, a written agreement with the applicant where they would agree to allow us to have permission within their leased area um, because they hold rights to that in order to construct the wall. Oh, so we would only need permission from, we wouldn't need permission from OCTA, we, need, we would need permission from the applicant. Is that correct? The, the applicant is leasing property from OCTA and they would have the ability then to invite other people onto the property just as any other less lessee has. So, uh, if need be, the city attorney's office would analyze the lease and determine if we need OCTA. But based on the information that's been given to me, I don't think we would need anything additional than the condition of approval itself. So, so if that worst case happened and we had to build a wall, there we wouldn't have to go and get special permission from another entity. I don't believe so. No. Okay, great. Don, on the on the issues of noise, maybe this is a question for the building official. But do the trailer standards do they have noise standards for the construction of these trailers through the, the national acts and whatever that uh, uh, I'm not I'm asking the bit building official thank you uh, Mike Jorgensen building official I'm not I'm not aware of any specific provisions that are in any uh, documents related to construction of mobile homes that would relate specifically to noise issues 
Thank you. Yeah, I will say on a conventional residential project, not a mobile home project, uh, there are building standards that you do have to comply with once the sounds report is for inside living space and so forth. Yeah, I'm aware of that. I just wondered if there's yeah, I'm not aware of one for the, uh, to the mobile home mobile. industry. Okay. Are there any other questions for staff at this time? Uh, yeah, one other for the building official. There's a, as I toured the property with the, the manager the other day, there's considerable uh, work going on right now, and, that, and, and that's, for the record, that's, ga that's all permitted gas, electric, water, sewer. Is it drainage also? Or there, they have a plan. They have a, an approved uh, permit and a plan that's been reviewed and approved, and it's under construction as we speak uh, for the replacement of their antiquated gas, sewer, water, electric, and I believe their telephone cable type stuff is in there too. And the sewer. And, and also, uh, I guess uh, fire. All the fire. Fire water is is part of the. The improved and all the fire hydrants and all that, right? That's all in the but drainage permit. is not a part of the per current uh, permit. Drainage improvements were not represented on the utilities plans. I believe any drainage improvements would be part of uh, the phase two, which would uh, okay. Because I, I noticed there, and I went back to side of the large scale plans that the drains that go underneath uh, there's eight or nine of them, some of them are quad piped, uh, go underneath. Of the eight or nine of them, I think about six or seven go underneath your trailers. Uh, and some of them are in disrepair. Uh, and so those are your drains. Uh, and so I guess at one time you're going to have to, I, I, I guess that will have to address that issue. Uh, uh, I'm not knowledgeable okay. on the site uh, infrastructure drainage issues. Okay. Those would be more of a uh, overall site drainage issues. I know. Uh, Mr. Ponson from the engineering division is here. Uh, typically, that's more in their area of expertise. I don't know if he can add anything, okay. add anything to it. And while, while you're coming up, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm very clear about this. There are, as far as the, the transformers that, that they want to put in the pop-outs, they currently have permission to uh, have, have approvals to install those behind where the current fence is. So that's, that's that an option. That is correct. The plan okay. that is currently approved. Those transformers are shown, but they're shown in a condition that's behind what we know as today as the current fence location. Great. Thank you. So uh, I think your question, Zach Ponson with the engineering department. Right. Uh, your question regarding the storm drains, they are uh, private storm drains. Okay. And so the um, city doesn't own or maintain them, so it would be okay. up to that. So, they, they, so they're putting a lot of money or an investment into their infrastructure here at some point in time. Obviously, it's your there a, a benefit to look at those at some future date. And yeah, I don't think it's in their current application to do so. Okay. All so right, thank you. We haven't seen it yet. Okay. Yvonne, did you have another question? I do. This might be for Amber. Or I would like to know on the site plan here, who owns the property that is between Coach 9 and 10? And th that would be the manager's office which appears to be, I don't know if this uh, site plan is to scale, but it appears to be the width of three lots. Who, who owns that? The corporation owns it. It's two lots. It's two lots? And is it, does that mean it's owned by all the owners together? The, the corporation owns the entire land, so it's healthy. If you'd step to the microphone so that um, they can hear you at home. Sorry. Uh, Eric Anderson, I'm the park manager. The the oh. property is held in the, such that it's in the form of a corporation. There's 90 homes and there's yes. 90 shares in that corporation. So in addition to uh, the shares, the corporation also owns that building and the common areas in the land. So it's in addition to the shares of each yes, of them? Yes, the, the corporation as an entity owns that property. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions of staff or can we invite the applicant up? Thank you. Okay. Um, would the applicant like to make a presentation? Oh, that's, that's, uh, hi, Eric Wills, Capstone Shores, Inc., uh, Vice President. Uh, I was before you, I think, on January 7th uh, talking about this matter, about the temporary pop-out, so not really focused on Phase 2. I can answer any questions on Phase 2, but 
our big deal and the time constraint we have right now is on the temporary pop-outs and the requirement that we put up what we're guessing to be a, about a, a million and a half dollars so that the city someday could build a wall that's yet approved and not part of our temporary pop out application. So uh, as I stated before, and I'll state again, we have a permit request for temporary pop outs that has nothing to do with the wall. And we have put a, a proposal in place, it's been in place, that the temporary pop outs and the transformers would be moved back to the west side of the fence where we have an approved permit right now if in fact that wall wasn't built. And the city has taken that position and said, no, if you, if you move those transformers over there, you have to build the wall. Well, there's a lot of road between Amber's staff report, coming to agreement on it, going to Coastal Commission, and getting that wall built. Do I think the wall is going to be built? Yeah. I mean, that's what we're working for. But we need to place these transformers now. And so for safety purposes, and just because that's where they're going to hopefully be at the end of the day when we have a wall, we would like to place them where they where they're end up going to be. And if in, in the odd chance that we're not going to do it, we're going to provide money where those transformers can be moved back. It seems like a pretty simple solution here. We've, we've offered time frames on it. We've said that we're going to actively pursue the wall. There's a bunch of check marks that the city can go through to make sure that we move those transformers back on, right, where, where it's approved right now. Where, where all of you have approved that permit, we can move it right back there if, in fact, that wall's not built. No harm, no foul. The fence stays the same. The landscaping stays the same. There's no difference. But for whatever reason, a level above Amber here has decided that we need to put up a million five or two million dollars to build a wall down the road. So we object to it. We think the requirement's illegal. We have stated so. Uh, there's a lot of documentation on it. Um, if, in fact, you guys approve this tonight, that requires us to build the wall as part of the temporary pop outs, we're not going to do it. Okay? I've, t I've said that at desi design review. I've said it. In, in letters, it's just not feasible, financially feasible to do it. So um, we hope that you guys will overturn staff. We gave you um, uh, language that we hope that you approve that would allow us to put the temporary pop outs there. We'll put up some money to make sure that those transformers in the fence are moved back at a later date if, in fact, the wall is not built. Um, that's it. Oh, Jim, oh. I believe you have a question. Um, you have a question, and um, and another one come up while you sure. while you were speaking, if if you will. Um, I just first, I just want to make sure I understand, you know, what you're telling us. It, it's you it would be your preference that we only, well, not not your preference. If you don't want us to approve the wall, anything about the wall at all right now, you just want us to approve the pop outs, and if we approve the wall, that would be unpalatable. Uh, to you, is that is that we, we want you to right? approve the wall in the context of phase two, right? There's, it, it's nice for the staff report to actually combine that so you can get a good picture of it, but it confuses the issue. Mm -hmm. um, the temporary pop-outs that was, it's been before you that we went to design review, we went to DMT, we went through the whole process. The temporary, you know, we we had the issue of whether they're temporary or not. It's a, they've always been temporary. That's a whole separate issue. It has nothing to do with the wall. You guys made it about the wall. All you have to do is remove that requirement out of there. So we okay. want the wall uh, approved as part of phase two. All right. I just want to understand now in terms of the two uh, applications that we're currently looking yes. at. Is there is there one like the second one that involves the wall? Do you object to that? Would you prefer us to? I mean. Is, are you saying you would prefer us to reject that? I'm not. I guess I'm not. On, still, on I'm phase, not quite clear on the about phase what you're two side, Again, there's there's a lot of unknowns in that staff report, and and that's what I was talking to Amber about tonight. It's like, boy, there's a lot of open ends in there. We would like that approved, and then we would immediately like to go to design review or where wherever else we need to go to kind of close out those loose ends. That's phase two. That's the wall. That's the landscaping. 
That's the pavers. That's the pretty pictures. So you want us to approve Absolutely. both applications? Right. Okay. Absolutely. We want you to approve the temporary pop-outs with the language that we have provided you in the letter that you received today from our legal counsel. We okay. provided you alternative language. That's how we want you to approve that. And so I, I haven't gotten to my original question yet, but I, I keep coming up with more questions, so forgive me. Um, that the language that you provided, if we don't include that language and say include something, conditions of approval substan substantially as staff has provided us, for instance, um, it, is, would that still be something acceptable to you? or would No. Th no, that would not be acceptable. Right. Okay. And the one thing I think, hopefully you guys are aware of this. I'm not sure you are, but I'm sure city council is. Definitely staff is, is aware of it. You know, we've been in, in settlement discussions with city for quite a long time. As we proposed it, was a requirement of settlement. So if, in fact, you don't approve it as we stated or you, re or you approve the wall, the settlement's off. It, this has been clear. It's been discussed at length. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a requirement. It's plain and simple. Okay. So, so to, to get down to the question that I originally had, uh, yeah. uh, and, which I think actually pertains to, to, this, to everything else you've been talking about as well, the uh, the communications we've gotten over time um, yeah. from from the attorney says that in order to move the uh, transformers either from west to east or east to west is uh, just about thirty thousand dollars, just under thirty thousand dollars. Not a big deal, correct? Okay. So is the and there's there's also been communications to us about the fact that this is a time sensitive issue. The, the pop outs are a time sensitive issue. Is the only reason it's a time-sensitive issue is because of that approximately $30,000 it would cost to move the transformers later? Is that is that is there anything else that makes it a time-sensitive well, you know, issue? It's a, you don't want to go and do this whole project and put your transformer, your main transformers that are going to operate the entire park in the wrong place. And that's what we're going to do if, in fact, this isn't approved the right way. We're going to put them on our side of the fence and eventually have to move them. Right, the thirty thousand dollars is the cost to move them back. It's much more expensive to move them from west to east because you're talking about opening up, splicing them, changing cables. Mm -hmm. Versus, if you're already on the railroad side, you're just moving it, cutting the cable. Right, you're cutting that longer cable and sticking it back. So it's much more expensive to place them in the uh, on our side of the fence now and move them later. So it's not thirty thousand, but it's more. Do you, do you have an estimate for that? Like you got this, this probably twice or three times as much. I mean, it's not the end all be all, but um, it just seems foolish for us to and for the city to require a wall as part of this temporary process. I just don't get it, and that's why it's been such a big issue. And that's why I'm here. As, you know, that's why we've met before you guys. That's why we've written the letters, uh -huh. and that's why we put it in the settlement agreement. We want to make it super clear. And every time the staff report comes out, it is the same old, same old. And I guess this is where the line is drawn. All right, uh, those are my questions. But let me let me just to kind of hark back to what we did in DRSC and, and here. The the, the app, just just to be clear, the application we have before us, that first application, is not for a temporary chain link fence. It's there's not nothing temporary in the application. So that's what that's what we have to consider, you know, going forward. Is and is that that is the wall? And and. So, as you know, and as I've discussed and written, everyone knew it was temporary. Your legal counsel knew it was temporary. All the higher level staff people knew it was temporary. That guy there knew it was temporary. Arguably, she knew it was temporary too. So we have a huge disagreement on that. Okay. All right. I guess I'm just kind of piling on here. But as far as you're concerned, we don't have a resolution in front of us that you want approved? Yes, you do. As is? You, you, you don't have a resolution, but we have the language that you can impose on that. It's basically approving the temporary pop-outs without the wall requirement. You have, you have what you need to make this, this finding. Uh, I'm okay. I may be misunderstanding. Basically, I'd go the other way, that the most important permit, as far as I'm concerned, is the variance in the architectural wall which that there's no reason to move the um, I mean in your eyes there's no reason to move the uh, transformer out if you don't get the wall 
Yeah, if we don't get the wall, there's no reason to move the transformer out. Exactly. So that's the most important thing to get resolved. Otherwise, there's no reason to, in other words, we'd be approving something that um, may or may not happen, and that's not something we normally do. You're talking about the wall now. Uh, moving the trans having the transformer out there. The wall may or may not happen. I mean, we still have to. I realize that. I realize that. But as far as not worrying about the other approvals you have to obtain, the only reason for us to have the transformer out there is if the wall's going to be there, correct? I would say that's correct, yeah. Okay. Yep. We're good. Don. Um, first off, uh, we're not aware of, of conditions of settlement. We have not been made aware of that. Uh, or the implied, you know, threats there. there that's too. unfortunate. Um, well, it's the nature of the business. Okay. Okay? I mean. Fair enough. You've uh, given yeah. us discovery here in, in a. Fair enough. Unfriendly way. It's unfortunate. Uh, Fair enough. We, in fact, like we say, the, the city staff is trying to get the cart before the horse. In other words, this wall has not been through design review. So they're trying to flip-flop and accelerate for you, kind of a end the rules and the processes and the procedures. Which is appreciated and, on Facebook. And then uh, at 5 o'clock this afternoon, I got a, you know, a letter from a lawyer with implied threats. So... Uh, would you be amenable to just improving the pop-out fence tonight while the, 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 the real wall goes back through design review with real plans and then brought forth at a later date? As I understand, one of the reasons that they wanted to do the wall side of the thing was to help us get going on the Coastal Commission side because all we need is an approval and concept, right? So that, that's what we were hoping to get to move on the Coastal Commission that would speed up getting the wall built, which everybody wants, right? And we, despite what the staff report says, you guys have a tremendous amount of data, and a lot of the departments have looked at it. We believe that we're pretty close. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I, I, I just told Eric we need to get together and make sure that we're totally on the same page here of what that is. But I think generally, I don't know if I want to speak for you, generally we're kind of in agreement on what that wall should look like which is the biggest piece, the drainage, the landscaping, all that stuff, I think, is noise. It can all be worked out. Um, I, I would like that wall approved because we would like to go, put, as you know, we have a lot of Coastal Commission issues uh, going on, and we would like to lump that right in there with them and, and get, that, get that going. So we, we hope that you would approve that phase two. And frankly, I hope that you approve the temporary pop, tra the, the transfer pop-outs as we have suggested. And the language that the that the lawyers provided today should not be new or unexpected. So apologize that it got late today, but it I'm surely you thought it was it was gonna come. I mean it's very consistent with what we've said now for three months. Well it wasn't made uh, I wasn't made aware of it. I'm pretty much of a detailed type of a person. Uh, and I think the let, date of the letter is today. Well I, I I testified before this committee on January 7th, the exact thing that I'm saying today. I wrote a letter, uh, which is part of your package, um, in December, is that right? In December, the exact thing I'm saying today. No difference. So it's, this is this a condition of settlement? You said that in the letter? I didn't do a condition of settlement to you guys. I would hope that that would be your internal discussion. You, you have you have the attorney here that's been involved with a lot of these discussion. I would surely hope that you have those internal discussions. I, I would just say that I settlement discussions are confidential. They aren't things that are discussed at an open planning commission meeting. So I will not be discussing anything of that nature in open session. Wayne, uh, this I like to ask a G. Uh, uh, gee, have you <coughs> read and approved the language in here for us to go forward tonight with what's in this letter? Yes, I've read and approved the resolution before, and I, I believe that it's no, no the, the letter. Yes, and I've read the letter as well. You've read the letter, but the language that they have in here, is that something that is acceptable? It, it's within your discretion, but I support staff's recommendation as is. Mm. I don't see that it says the walls are eight foot high or six foot high. I'm not seeing that here. 
Yeah, but what am I missing? Those are, it's a temporary fence in that letter. It's Nothing not else, okay. Yeah, it's just a temporary just fence. Just about the fence. That's it. Temporary fence. Okay. Are there other questions of the applicant, Michael? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a little confused now about this letter that we received today proposing language changes that seem to be um, in conflict with what we were given from city staff. Now, I'm not clear, really not clear, if the city's amenable to make these changes in this letter or not. I, it's just unclear to me. When, I, and I think the city attorney has said that it's within our discretion to uh, to to make that determination to but, go. But but these are different than the conditions that were in our package to make the approval. It's, it's the same as any approval you make. Sometimes the applicant asks for revisions to the conditions of approval within your discretion to do so. But staff recommendation is that you move forward with the resolutions as all, as they are written. Can I add just a couple points of fact and clarification to this? Um, Commissioner Smith, we were aware of what their desires were. That's why they're included in attachment six of your uh, staff report. And staff has drafted the conditions of approval they way, the way they are for reasons in order to ensure that that construction of that wall is in fact built. In your staff report, under the architectural permit, it specifically says that staff does not believe that the findings can be met for the architectural permit. And the architectural permit is only for the temporary fence. It is completely separate from the wall. But if we were looking at an architectural permit solely for a temporary fence, without any guarantee that something else that complies with the general plan would be built, that staff does not see how the findings can be met in order to approve that architectural permit. So if you separate those applications or you separate those conditions of approval and say, fine, you don't have to approve the wall, then there's no way for you to actually meet the findings so you can't approve the temporary pop-outs anyway. So just wanted to make that staff analysis to you and, and make you know that we did know that it is in the staff report. It's a one sentencing that says this cannot be done. And then in order to approve this application, you would have to approve a permanent fixture that does comply with those standards. Um, I think I had one other thing, but I can't remember what it is right now. <laughs> and that's uh, basically the same thing that you, uh, your staff report at the time of design review uh, recommended. Exactly. Uh, the other thing I'm sorry I wanted to clarify was that in no way does this constitute an in-concept approval to the California Coastal Commission. That wasn't the intent, and I don't believe it, it works as an in-concept approval. We, he, the applicant would actually have to get the staff waiver approved have approval of the design subcommittee and the city planner and have that document prior to going to the California Coastal Commission. The applicant can, however, go to the California Coastal Commission and say, we did receive, you know, inform them of the process and hopefully get preliminary feedback at that time, but it wouldn't be a formal in-concept approval um, that is stamped by the city. So I just want to make that differentiation too. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, Bonnie, did you have a question of the applicant? Okay, are there any further questions of the applicant? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any, anything further you wanted to add? Um, I, I do find that last comment very interesting. So the only reason then that staff really wanted to push phase two through and combine it was for the wall as part of the temporary pop-outs. I think that was actually clear during the design review process. We probably spent an hour and a half or two hours trying to talk about of some way that um, you somehow could uh, have the permanent wall application um, reviewed in some uh, parallel fashion so that we could make the findings that we needed to make in order to approve a temporary fence. So I know that's not news because we did discuss that at, at length at that time. Let's just say that's, that's an interesting comment. So I hear you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, since the applicant has finished his presentation, we'll open the public hearing. Uh, do we have any cards, Eileen? Is there anyone who wishes to speak to this matter? Seeing no one step forward, I'll close the public hearing and invite discussion. Is there anybody who wants to start us off, Jim? Um, I'll start. Um, I've got, uh, I think, think, three main issues. Uh, to talk about it, and at least a couple of them I, I really am interested in hearing what the uh, other members of the committee have to say, because I'm 
there, obviously there's a lot going on here, a lot of you know churn underneath, uh, and uh, you know I think ultimately a nice, a lovely wall there is something in the interest of a couple of shores. It's in the best interest of the city. I think it'd be, I think that that by itself is a great win-win for the uh, for the community. Um, when I look at the, the variance, the request for the variance, um, I, in that one, that I have a hard time uh, making the findings for that because uh, I think I think staff makes a good argument, but I, uh, uh, it's not, not not an argument I can really accept. I think that there are a lot of other. This is an open space area, zoned as open space. Um, I don't think that there's any special any any thing that they are lacking in terms of. Uh, having a regular sized wall in open space and if you look at the fact that this is along the railroad track and there's many other homes on the railroad track regardless of the size uh, of the side they're subject to that noise for instance and they're subject to a train being nearby um, I'm afraid if we permitted a, a wall over six feet and allowed that variance then we'd be giving them a special privilege and um, again, I'm interested in what, what, what other people have to have to say about it, but that's my thinking. I haven't heard any evidence that this wouldn't be a special privilege. Um, the the second issue is just sort of the, the manner we're doing it with this. I know we we all feel like we're, this is a little bit backwards. Um, uh, in my time on the planning commission, we've never sort of done an approval quite this way. Uh, I think we're trying to accommodate the applicant. I think staff has actually been doing a good job in coming up with you know conditions and working with the applicant to try and make this work for them. Um, when I originally read the report, I kind of felt like, well, a couple of shores is they're putting their money where their mouth is because, uh, which I thought was a, a real good sign because they were saying, well, if we don't build the wall in a year, we'll make sure that the money is there for you, you guys to build the wall. But then we got a few hours ago, we got the communication from uh, from the council, and uh, and what we heard uh, here in uh, in public comment uh, from the applicant, and it doesn't sound like that's so much the case. Uh, and that worries me. It's sort of like, well, if we don't do it, then you know we'll give you thirty thousand dollars to move the transformers back. Just and to be clear, Jim, you meant from the uh, uh, the applicants' council. The letter from the, the, letter from the applicants' council. Yeah, you didn't I, mean the city council. Oh, forgive me. Yes, not our council. The applicants' council. Excuse me. Um, so uh, that is that's a little you know uh, it's a little problematic. I, I think when we when we look at this. It's that first application is is to allow a chain link fence with no and if, if that's all we look at then there's no this is and we have this discussion design review there is no uh, promise or commitment or inevitability for something to be built that conforms with the general plan because a chain link fence certainly does not conform to the with the general plan and if they're modifying the existing fence then like everybody else they they're grandfathered in now but they would have to bring it into conformance with the general plan like everybody else in the community would need to do so like and like we pointed out in, in design review I think part of our job in design review is to try and make life easier for applicants when they get to the Planning Commission and let them know of any any potential issues and I think we made it clear in design review that if there wasn't kind of a rock-solid connection between what they would be building with the pop-outs and an ultimate something that ultimately conformed to the general plan and that then we would probably have difficulty making the finding uh, and I'm looking at this now and what they're what the applicant is asking for the, the changes the applicant is asking for um, makes me feel like well you know we're kind of back to square one in terms of you know or, that not having that solid connection I think the the uh, the uh, conditions that staff has put in for the second application um, go a long way towards helping to assure that. Um, so uh, I have my concerns about that, and and that's something I want to hear from the rest of the commission on. Um, the third item that I concern that I had was um, with uh, uh, the CEQA. Uh, staff had recommended that uh, an EIR wasn't required; um, that it falls under the exception, uh, excuse me, the exemption category of CEQA because it's an accessory structure as being a wall. Uh, but CEQA also has the notion of, um, just to be confusing, of exceptions to exemptions. And if there's an exemption but there is a kind of a special case with that exception, well, then you can still require that an EIR be created. And in this case, the accessory structure is, you know, what, two-thirds, three-quarters of a mile long. Two-thirds two of a mile long. So that's a, that's a fairly large accessory structure. Um, 
I have questions and they may not be they may be questions where the answer is there's no problem but I think that there's maybe questions we need to ask like what is the sound attenuation up going up into Marblehead um, what is the visual impact of something that long um, you know it's a it's a kind of a target for graffiti if we don't have certain design considerations on the wall nice big blank space is inevitably a place that gets graffitied we're gonna have a lot more bike and ped traffic along that area it's a city gateway so that's part of that environmental you know potential environmental impact so I you know uh, you know I appreciate that it's an accessory structure and that we want to kind of move things through and uh, if we don't need to do an environmental impact report we certainly don't want to do one but I I'm concerned you know sequel or not I'm concerned that there's maybe some questions that haven't been asked about a wall that's that's two-thirds of a mile long um, that we just may need to ask to to get the answers to so those are my three main concerns and I you know before I kind of you know uh, put a stake in the ground I, I really want to hear from the rest of the Commission so your concern Jim um, on the CEQA issue um, is that if we move this forward quickly to accommodate the applicant that uh, there may be impacts um, on uh, other homeowners in the area or on the community in, in other ways that we haven't yet anticipated exactly other other homeowners and soon-to-be homeowners and park goers up in up in uh, Marblehead some of those new parks are right on the edge there um, people who are walking or biking along there is there going to be some kind of sound attenuation or you know I don't know atmosphere wind blowback I, I have no idea I just think that it's a long you know if it were a 20 foot wall that's one thing but it's a 3600 foot wall so it just seems like there are some some questions that need to be asked um, there are with any structure um, when it gets large there are new issues and new new design concerns that come up um, that you don't have to worry about when something is smaller it's a um, you know, what's the it's a failure mode, design failure mode. The, the name escapes me now, but um, scaling, scaling factors. So there may be scaling factors that we may, may need to be concerned with here. So yeah, and all of those can impact the, the community in some way. So that's why I have a concern, potential concern about not having the EIR. So that's why I wanted to see if other members might alleviate that concern or share that concern. Okay, well those are good discussion points for all of us to consider. Um, Bonnie? Uh, I have some of the same sequel concerns. Um, the f staff report just has basically that because accessory um, structures are being built, then CEQA is they're exempt to a class three. But they don't say what some of these CEQA um, uh, mitigations would be. And I'd like some uh, more information about that. And the other thing is, for an eight-foot wall, we would have to grant a variance, and our zoning code is very clear. Uh, in variance under B, authority, the, the Planning Commission is the final authority on variances, not the staff. And so it is our task to make sure that all five of the following findings are met, because our zoning code requires that, F page 17-56. Uh, hyphen 56. And one of the first, there's, I can see at least three of them that I have a real problem with. One is that strict application of the code, which is the six-foot height, would result in hardship to the property owners and deprive them of the same privileges enjoyed by others in the same zone. So if you look at hardship, the definition, Merriam-Webster's, the condition of lacking necessities or comforts, deprivation, and suffering. Would they be suffering? and deprived with a six-foot fence or wall. Deprivation is defined as the damaging lack of material benefits considered to be basic necessities. Is an eight-foot wall more than three-quarters of a mile long a basic necessity? Damaging, having a detrimental effect on someone or something. Would it be detrimental to the property owners if they had a six-foot solid wall rather than an eight-foot one, going from a five-foot chain lake fence, which is what they have now, and going to a six-foot uh, solid wall with beautiful landscaping, a beautiful palette, I find it hard to find that this is causing hardship, deprivation, or suffering. 
and then also one of the other points of the five that must be met in order for us to grant this variance is that it must be consistent with the general plan as far as uh, the implement implementation of the Coastal Act, which is found on page C-4 in the general plan. And um, there is no mitigation presented as a condition in the Coastal Act as put forth in our local coastal element uh, that mitigates putting a wall that's solid so that our public benefit, our public access along the Pacific Coast Highway, Capistrano, uh, El Camino Real, um, it used to be the King's Highway, I believe, uh, a view that's been enjoyed for decades. And we are now expanding our bike lanes and our pedestrian lanes all the way to Dana Point, right, right beside this, this wall that's going in. Everyone is going to know that the ocean is over there because you can see it now. You can see it in the pictures I've brought today that you can see today. But once that wall is up, it's a permanent structure, and it will be there forever. So this is something that will also affect not only our city, but at the Coastal Act level, we're talking about a state level, the whole coast. What's going to happen in Dana Point? What's going to happen in our neighboring cities? Are they going to want eight-foot walls too? So those are my concerns. And I really do would hope that, that uh, Capistrano Shores can upgrade their transformers so that it's up, up so to service their needs. I really would like to do that for them. But because of the way these have been couched together in the same uh, CUP invariance, it makes it so that can't happen. Okay, so Bonnie, um, sounds like you share two of Jim's concerns. You have some CEQA concerns. Um, one of yours specifically um, that Jim did not mention was access, and um, you're, um, you don't believe that you can make the, the findings for the variance, um, uh, and you have some concerns about that. Is that correct? Okay, Don? Yeah, I think unusual circumstances here uh, trying to work this together. I think staff step forward, trying to blend some things and uh, and help Capistrano Shores out. There's been contentious issues um, for the last four, four and a half years. I've been on the commission. I think my uh, your legal representation stack at my house is about this thick over years. Um, so I think uh, there's a lot of good that can come out of this at the end game here. Uh, and so the secret concern kind of goes away if the, if the variance goes away. In other words, if you build, you know, a six-foot wall, anybody can build a six-foot wall. We wouldn't, you know, so you wouldn't even have, definitely wouldn't have a secret requirement or concern. Um, I, too, have a hard time making the finding for the variance of an eight-foot wall. Uh, the plus plus out of it is the CEQA concerns basically go away because anybody can have a six foot wall anywhere in the zone and, and by our by our own you know zoning ordinances and, and established codes. So there's a lot of a plus plus in that regard. I see where there's a link, and I think the end point is good. Uh, the point about the wall, in fact, is uh, when we wrote the general plan, all the, the Requirements for gateways and other and, and the way a sense of arrival and all that stuff drive you to a wall. So in our own general plan, we would we would drive to the end game of this wall. So I think what Capistrano Cap Shores wants at the end game is what we would want in a way. I think uh, and so if we do not approve the variance, go with a six foot wall that would mitigate. The requirement for any CEQA or mitigated negative de declaration, actually, because anybody could, uh, excuse you, uh, could, you know, apply for a six foot wall anywhere they want. Uh, so I think we ought to try to lean forward and, and work this thing. And when it's out of sequence, it's not the way we're trying to prove an in concept in a way wall without the, the usual design, final design issues that are normally go before design review subcommittee and then come to us. And we're 
yeah, we're going at risk. The city's trying to go at risk, and we're trying to mitigate that risk. So the, the mitigation then becomes this this amount of what it takes to get the wall done and, and, amount, and the attorney letter as far as some of the amount of bond that has to be set up in a way as far as what's the amount of risk we're willing to take to get to the end result. So I'd like to see if we could put together something to make this happen uh, because I think it's for the good of the city and our interest way and the other pathways we're going to build there. Uh, it's it's out of sequence. You have to appreciate that it is out of sequence, and uh, threats get you nowhere. And so, with that, uh, my view is go forward with not approving the variance. But let let it a six foot all, and with the monument scaled accordingly from nine feet nine inches down to match whatever is appropriately balanced with the six foot wall. That alleviates sequa. It alleviates a lot of the other issues. We can move forward with it. The other issue is to work out some of this 5 o'clock in the evening uh, correspondence from their attorney, which is not appreciated in the timing at all, considering the complexity of the situation. So uh, that's my view. Okay, Don. So um, you uh, you share the concerns that Bonnie and uh, and uh, Jim have expressed um, about uh, not being able to meet uh, the findings for the variance. Um, you uh, do not share the CEQA concerns because um, those would not exist uh, if, um, we, if we found that mm -hmm. uh, we could not meet the findings for the yeah. variance. I can okay. support the findings required for the conditional use permit and the architectural permit. That's laid before us mm -hmm. by staff. I think we haven't discussed that yet at all. Uh, I can recognize the issue, and I think we all recognize the issue. This is out of sequence, and we're trying to mitigate it. And uh, so that's where I stand. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I, I, I'm sorry. Um, I just had a quick question for staff based on um, something that um, Don said, because it's not my understanding. If um, regarding the, the CEQA comment, that, that if we uh, decline the variance, we wouldn't have a CEQA issue, does the, would the wall still require a CUP, which could potentially then raise a CEQA question? Well, this wall still requires a discretionary permit, which requires CEQA. In this case, staff found it was acceptable to, to do the exemption. So yeah. by saying that if it meets the requirement, does that mean that it, it is now exempt in your opinion? You no, I mean, it, I mean, I, 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 what I took Don to mean was if we decline the variance, we don't, they don't need a permit for it, so we wouldn't, there wouldn't be a CEQA question. We need a permit for it, but it, the CEQA classification stands that the staff has put there with the exemption from it. Okay, so oh, so so that would be your finding. Yeah. Okay, got it. Thanks. Okay. I, I okay. That was a good clarification that it's not that that um, CEQA doesn't come into play. Yeah. It's that for, is that for you it's um, it's not an issue. Okay, Bart? Okay, uh, I'm going to take a little different direction because I kind of anticipated that we'd have uh, people talking about the process here. Um, I'm going to kind of throw this back at the applicant, and I agree with uh, Don very much that we're here to work with the applicant and try to come up with a solution to this. Uh, I want to go and start with the um, variance issue on the wall and indicate that the documents we've got are so incomplete, we really can't analyze what we're getting as far as the wall is concerned. Um, I've gone through these. Just about each of the consultants has drawn something different for the entry monument. <laughs> Landscape's got something different than the renderings, got something different than the uh, um, site plan. Um, we don't have any of the trash enclosure designs, which is usually a, a site plan approval. Um, so even if we say we want to keep this to a six-foot wall, um, it's going to really have to go back through the process to develop the design of a wall that we um, are happy with. Um, as far as a temporary fence, uh, I could support that if we can come to some kind of resolution where we are going to get approval of the, uh, um, the wall. Uh, as far as the location of the transformers, you can certainly put an S-bend in the conduit and all to have the extra cable there for pulling it out at a future time if it doesn't work out uh, to mitigate the cost of having to splice. 
Um, you can put a loop, you can put a sweep. There's all sorts of ways to have the additional cable down there uh, to move it out five feet. So I wouldn't use the difficulty of moving it at a future time to make the decision. Um, we've got to make findings and um, the kind of things that don't let me make a variance call is we have no grades, we have no idea where this wall is in relationship to the road, the bicycle lanes, the railroad tracks. There's no um, sections that show that, um, and we need that to make that decision. We submit that, so I don't know what you have. We have cross sections showing the heights and all. Uh, they haven't put, been put in front of me, so until I have them, I can't make that decision. Um, so I wouldn't be able to support the uh, the heights increase. Um, I think the wall needs serious work. Uh, I was even anticipating you could go, we don't even know how big the pilasters are or how tall the pilasters are. That's not on any of your drawings. Um, and I think we need, now that we have some planning and the railroads allowed us to put planning on the outside, I think that's great. We need to see what that is. And I really was hoping you'd put some um, recesses in the wall so you can have a little more mature and larger landscaping on that side because a three-quarter mile long wall straight is brutal, especially when there's nothing separating the base. Now we've got some planning, which is great. I, I'm glad you worked that out. But I think some more undulation is going to be required. Um, so I think the resolution for the wall and what kind of approval we're giving an approval in concept, uh, we can't really do that, I don't believe. Um, what would be the process of that, Jim? Just giving all sorts of recommendations to staff to re-review it or? I'm not sure what you mean. If you mean in concept as an in concept coastal approval, yeah. the step is first you have to approve all the discretionary permits of the city and then staff issues the in concept approval. So what would we do to have to get that implemented? You'd have to approve the project for the conditional use permit. And um, if you don't choose to go the variance, then we'd have to rewrite the. Uh, is, is there a coastal heritage permit? No. There, that's what the staff waiver of the architectural permit would be, is that you, with the conditions of approval the way that they're written, you're saying that you approve the basic preliminary design of the project and that you are relying on the design review subcommittee and the city planner to approve any subsequent uh, design of that wall is how the conditions are written right now. Okay, let me think about that a little while I'll jump back in. Okay. All right, uh, Wayne. <clears throat> well, you all have taken away my thunder. I'm pretty bottom line here. Um, I certainly agree with Bonnie that um, uh, we cannot uh, approve a, a variance approval because we're not able to satisfy the following items, and she read them. I'm not going to read them again, um, so I will not be uh, in, 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 a, in uh, approval for a variance. Um, I'm very concerned that this has not gone through a process because what we are seeing right now is the result of not going through a process. And it's very, um, it's very uh, confusing. Uh, it's not at all clear uh, what we really want or what's really before us with regard to what we have uh, presented to us. Um, and I would like to really see it go back through the process itself. Uh, I think that that's the best way to do it. Um, I think there's, we're just not able to make any findings here that are going to be in, in, in concert with what staff recommendation has at this point. So um, I think this is a, a very unfortunate thing when we receive something at 5 o'clock. Uh, I don't think that, uh, I don't think it's reasonable for us to really consider that uh, uh, letter at this time. Um, because we've not really had the, the, uh, the opportunity to really study it. Uh, and so um, I, I just think it needs to go through back, back through the process once again. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, wait. Uh, uh, it, yep. Regarding the letter that was received, um, 
uh, I just want to point to your packet to the letter that was presented to staff and uh, the city council members on December 17th, 2014. And that letter is almost verbatim for what the attorney wrote today. It's just a reiteration. So you've definitely had the timeline, our goals, the way in which we're presenting them. It's, it's not new information. It's just a reiteration. And the reason it came late is because we get the staff report late. So then we respond to that, and that's as soon as we could get it back. Okay. I just want to clarify that. Thank you, Eric. Um, Michael? My turn. <clears throat> this is a good idea, I think. But the devil's in the details on this. That's the real problem. Um, I think maybe all of us would like to see this happen if it was done right and follows the right rules and everybody was comfortable in knowing that what we were doing was well thought out. And I, I'm having a problem with that right now, and it's it's really difficult. There there's a there's a lot of conundrums in this project, which is pretty simple. I mean, if it would have been presented as a six foot wall running along there without a lot of ins and outs and this and that's and everything else, <clears throat> I don't think we'd be debating this so much. But what's happened, I think, unfortunately, is that a good idea that I think would be good for the city and be good for the folks <clears throat> in your neighborhood is gotten to the point where there's too many roadblocks being thrown up to make this a straightforward project. And I look at my, my role here, as I'm sure the other commissioners look, as I like to follow the rules. I like to follow the code. I like to be able to let the applicants be uh, successful as long as they play by the rule book. And as long as that is, I'll always support the project. But this is like peeling an onion back, and every layer that I've been peeled back here today, especially because I thought earlier, quite honestly, um, I was thinking this was probably going to zip through here. But boy, after examining this in closer detail and listening to some of the other commissioners would have raised beautiful um, <clears throat> brilliant points that need to be addressed and, and can't be swept under. Um, it's impossible for me to, to be able to give this a final approval based on where we are now. And so I'm just going to maybe <clears throat> go through my points that might be similar. But first off, um, this project needs proper design review. It didn't get that. Without it, I just don't feel that we can justify uh, making an approval on a project that is so out of context with the normal process. So um, I, I can't abide by that, and I think that's a requirement and needs to be done. Um, we're also <clears throat> looking at the local coastal plan, and we know that that has some bearing on this project, but we're not quite sure what it is. And I think uh, Commissioner Eagleston brought that up, and I think for us in even design review and, and the rest of the commissioners, we need to know if there could be conflicts in that with this project because we want the local coastal uh, plan to be successful and we want to be able to play by the rule book there too. So that quite, on, quite honestly has not been put to the measuring tape on that. Um, <clears throat> I think one of the things that this project could do that would be a big hit regardless of all these other issues, is that, and it probably will become a big issue with the California Coastal Commission, if I was going to bet on it, is that you're going to need, I think, to be a good neighbor to provide coastal access. And it's not really shown on the plan. And I think that it's possible, um, we've been hint hinting on what that could be, and when you go through your, your new gateway, there ought to be a pedestrian path, maybe where those uh, empty... Um, houses um, exist where the, the community could get there. And I know it's not a, I know it's not really a beach unless the tide's really low. It's riprap. But, you know, riprap is something to, to, to do, and you can fish off of it and stuff like that. So that's an honest-to-gosh, realistic um, expectation I think we all have. And uh, that's just what we need to, to, to deal with in, in today's world. I think... Pushing the six-foot height limit puts us 
in a very difficult position where we just cannot justify it. And making this an eight-foot wall instead of a six-foot wall or a fence um, is another obstacle that you're putting in front of us so that we can't streamline you. We want to streamline you. We want to get this resolved. I think everybody here would say we're committed to doing that. But when various <coughs> obstacles get thrown into this mix, it becomes complicated. And it's troublesome to, to say, well, gee, you know, we don't have all the information, and I think we ought to just go ahead with this. I, I don't think anybody here is really in a position to feel comfortable about that. Um, I think the, the, it's encouraging to see the letter from OTC about the landscaping poking through the fence and being a, a part of that design. And, and I'm all for that. I hope that does become a part of the design solution. And, and maybe we need to look even at a broader landscape palette there with trees and things like that. But there's no doubt in my mind that this is a long fence and or a long wall. And without having some interesting screening and shading and, and, and undulation or, or what have you, it, it could become an eyesore. And it's, it's, an, it's an entrance way when you're coming from the north and you're going south and you're going to go by that and you're going to see that long wall. And <clears throat> I think that that raises uh, issues of we don't want to really do something that, that would kind of offset the, the nature of our beach town. And I'm worried about that. Um, the fulfillment of the conditions of approval, I think, have to stand. Uh, they're laid out here in our documents, and I support those conditions of approval, and I would think that those will have to be met. And then uh, finally, but probably <clears throat> not least, because uh, I really don't know about the CEQA thing, and, and, and I think that's an interesting observation, and maybe that needs to be examined further, but... <clears throat> Um, but what I'm concerned about, my last, my last point, is that I'm terribly uncomfortable with trying to um, abide by the changes in uh, the language that we've set forth uh, that are outlined in this letter that I really haven't seen before, and we haven't really discussed it. I'm really uncomfortable with, with doing it, and I see that as another obstacle. And if there's obstacles to be thrown at us, how can we streamline this? How can we help you? And I think I'm, I'm pleading out to you and saying, help us here. We've got to build bridges, and we're building walls. Thanks. Right. Before you jump in, I, I don't know if I wanted to bring this up or not. Um, Amber, let me ask you a question. If they had come in with a application for a six-foot high um, Spanish colonial revival wall enclosure around the transformer, even be it temporary, or it's just a frame with stucco on the outside and a brick cap and some pilasters, would that have to have gone through the same process here, or could it have uh, a staff exemption? No, it would have gone through the same process. The open space requirement for any accessory building or slash structure is that it requires a conditional use permit because it's an open Doesn't space. Doesn't it say fences and walls are exempt? Uh, no. That's a sequel. Yeah. Okay, so we'd still have to go through the same process. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. We, we, we certainly want to be applicant friendly, so go ahead. Yeah. On the temporary wall side, and again, probably in November or December, I sent, I think, all of you pictures of temporary fencing that's around the city, some of which are, are actual city. Your, your equipment yard on Pico, temporary fencing, has been there for five years. I don't know how you can just single us out and say you don't have temporary fencing. You go anywhere around North Beach, there's temporary fencing everywhere. I guarantee you our temporary fence is going to be up much less than the temporary fencing that's been up all around North Beach. And I doubt that any one of those people, including the city, has gone through what we're going through to put up a temporary fence. Guarantee you. Jim? 
uh, two things. One, one just to address that real quickly, because I saw the uh, I saw the communication and, and looked at the pictures of the temporary fences. Um, as I recall, all but one of those temporary fences were specifically the orange type construction fences, like around what they have around Marblehead right now. The one you are right, there is an unsightly one next to the to the construction yard, but. That, that one should be changed, but like yours, it's essentially grandfathered in. It was in before the current general plan. If that fence were to be changed, it would go through a similar process. So, you know, the, this, this is just the process that occurs when something's been grandfathered in. There's no, you know, there's no fuss about it until there's going to be a change and extension to it. So then it needs to conform to the general plan and, and the zoning ordinances. Um, I think. I think one of the crux of the problems here that we're dealing with is the applicant is, is insisting this is temporary and there's communications that say that it's temporary, but there's in these communications there's no there's no hook into the permanence of it, right? And uh, it's sort of like, you know, temporary plus open ended equals permanent. So, you know, that's kind of that's that's the situation that we have. I mean that is from a practical point of view. I understand I understand that that's not your picture of it. That's not your word of it, and and I, I'm sure your your heart's yeah. It's not your intent. Your heart's in the right place, but from but from a legal and from a planning perspective, if there's not a something that says okay, this is the end of the temporary part of it, and this is the beginning of the permanent part of it, then then it's it's not temporary from from that legal and and planning sense. So that's what we're. That's what we have to consider. That's you know, and and the attempt of these two applications is to hook that in, so you get what you want. And I think in the end, but what like Don was saying, the city and you get kind of the same. We really want the same thing. We want a nice wall there. And I think, you know, uh, you know that end point is uh, we're in agreement. We're you know, I think we want that. It's kind of like how we get there and how we how we keep the risk down on the city side. In terms of finding itself in a situation where we've just got you know more chain link fence, so so that that is that is our conundrum that that we're trying to deal with. The very real conundrum, and and uh, yeah, I, I think it does, it sounds like there's not a lot of stomach for the variance. Just to maybe summarize a little bit, it doesn't sound like like that's something that we're gonna we're gonna be able to address tonight. Um, uh, I think Don. Even with a six-foot fence, because of the length of it, um, I would still be more comfortable with some kind of environmental impact uh, process or look at it. I would, of course, want that to be as small as possible. This isn't a huge building or anything, but it's long enough where I think it, it warrants it. And I keep coming back to, you know, I, I, I got I, I got that it's the applicant feels it's temporary, but it's not temporary to us. It's not temporary from our point of view. Unless we've got that solid, just like we were talking about in design review, unless there's that solid connection there, I think I, I could probably support this with the existing uh, conditions of approval. I can I, the um, except for the not with the variance, but the other what is that? The architectural. No. I could I could approve the first architectural approval and the second conditional use permit with the conditions that are in there. We might want to talk a little bit about tweaking them or refining them a little bit, but I. You know, given what we've been handed, you know, at the eleventh hour. Well, not exactly the eleventh hour, but or the reminder we got at the eleventh hour. It's not. It's not something that that guarantees the city um, uh, that there's going to be a permanent structure there. I, I will make the observation too that the applicant is willing to sort of put put up about thirty thousand dollars to have these moved back, and the city would be taking on a burden. Because it might be more than thirty thousand dollars to move it back, or twenty-nine, whatever it was, and um, at the same time, it would require staff time and committee time and things like that to move that back. So there, there is a bit of a burden that the city would be assuming, I think, to to say, you know, okay, you just have to put up the the thirty thousand to to move it back. I think because there's already approval for the applicant to install these transformers on their side of the fence. If we, you know, the applicant does have another option, which is to go ahead and install them there, to move and to move them after the wall is in place. If the time is, if if the current construction schedule is so time so time critical, and I'm sure that we could look at, you know, 
perhaps fast tracking design review on this and that sort of thing and consideration of the applicant's situation. But uh, but that is another possibility is to is to fall back on, you know, moving it should be the applicant's responsibility um, because we have to go through um, we have to go through the process rather than taking any risk on the city's part, either financially or just the, the complexity in the future of having sort of a complex deal like this. So that's kind of after hearing all you, that's kind of where I've been getting to. Okay. Um, did you have something you wanted to say first? I haven't. Yeah, can I just briefly interject that in, in a way, city staff today coming to us, uh, yeah, a lot of other, you know, communications with Cap Center Shores, not to us, but to the staff and or the council or other letters from other dates, has shown uh, the propensity or the or the the desire to try to take some of this risk. To me, uh, they they weaved together. A, a, this is a house of cards with the two con two approval projects. The two together and so via discussions with other people that we have not been privy to with staff other lawyers DRC whatever uh, what's been presented before us is, is a, a de facto uh, statement by city staff and maybe the council uh, of, uh, willing to assume some some risk going forward with good faith that they'll come to design review and you know, start working with, you know, just not a 3,600-foit straight-line wall. So I, I just like to throw that out there. I know uh, Chair Darden wants to make some comments. Okay. Um, you know, I know you want to bring up a lot of issues about what you have going on uh, with, with regard to the legal issues, but I, I think you're well aware that um, those issues really don't um, affect uh, our judgment here tonight that our judgment is based on findings that's something that um, we've discussed since our um, our this body's um, and the subcommittee of this body's earliest conversations with you uh, in DRSC uh, and uh, I think um, I think in DRSC we displayed um, uh, a willingness to try to find solutions so that somehow the fact that you were um, coming to us with an application for a temporary wall which could not meet findings, that somehow we would find a way to um, have that attached to the other application that you had that was pending, uh, but further behind in the process, that somehow we could connect those two so that you could get what you wanted and the city could have the assurances that they needed. Um, it seemed to me that um, that was the spirit of what staff has brought forward to us tonight. Um, it is um, a very unusual um, uh, situation where we have, um, you know, all of these um, uh, additional conditions of approval that we don't usually have. Um, but I, I think that's a measure of um, city staff's uh, effort to try to accommodate what you've asked of us. Um, I, I, I would agree um, about the variance issue. Um, I have a lot of concerns. I, I respect um, staff's uh, points on the fact that this is a very, um, uh, this is an unusual uh, set of circumstances, but I worry that um, similar, although not um, uh, not identical arguments could be made by um, other properties along along the coast, and um, I'm 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 just not comfortable um, with um, meeting the findings on on the variance, and I I think um, we're probably all in agreement uh, on that. At least it seems uh, that that's the case, and that there's a concern about granting special privileges um, that we would then need to grant to others. Um, I I. I thought the CEQA uh, comments were very um, were very uh, persuasive, um, and I think they had some validity. Um, but um, I'm I'm comfortable um, with um, 
with uh, having uh, the uh, exception. Uh, I I think, um, well, it's, I'll just leave it at that. I'm comfortable with that. I'm also, um, uh, I'm comfortable with the, um, with the process, albeit an unusual one, because I think it could help the applicant um, get what uh, what they need from a time uh, standpoint. Uh, but uh, the fact that this would go through DRSC, we have some, uh, we're not some, we have um, uh, significant control over the design of the final product. Um, and um, I'm comfortable with that if we have the financial assurance that um, you know we would uh, get the um, get the uh, wall that is um, of the quality that it needs to be in order to meet the requirements of our general plan. Um, uh, so uh, if those are in place, I can meet the findings um, so that we could approve the temporary uh, fence and and pop outs now. Uh, so. Um, I would I would be comfortable um, basically um, approving everything except uh, the variance tonight. Uh, I don't know if um, if that's something that there is support for within the majority, and if anybody wishes to make a motion, or if there's somebody has uh, uh, another uh, point of view and would prefer to make a um, a motion with uh, different stipulations. Michael, um, I'd like to ask for a clarification on what you're saying. Uh, are you, um, by making an approval except for the variance of the height, are you approving of this proposed language change? No, okay. it would be with the conditions of approval as set set forth by by staff. Um, I I agree with with Jim in that um, we can't meet the findings for the um, the temporary. Uh, fence unless we have um, assurances that um, the temporary fence will be replaced by um, a permanent wall that meets the guidelines um, as set out in the general plan. Jim? Um, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Bonnie, I didn't see yours. I think I could agree with you. If we could add uh, a condition uh, that the applicant, um, let's see, um, that we in, include a provision that the applicant and Coastal Commission work together to satisfy the public access requirement to mitigate the um, the, the long over three quarter uh, mile wall. I would I would be comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. um, I think on a couple of the conditions that they currently exist. They, they sort of uh, they seem to imply that the only um, I guess uh, decoration on the wall is landscaping vines and such like that the implication in a couple of these the implication seems to be that there's you know the whole wall is just going to have vines from from end to end and I think that's certainly fine in places and even large sections but I think we, sh we need a little more flexibility than that I'm thinking of in the first application uh, I think it's uh, condition 19 um, there's a, a statement if Okta doesn't approve the landscaping then you know we, we probably want to remove that we don't want them to be you know we want that flexibility ourselves and in, in the second application I think it's uh, um, uh, number 13 uh, let me look and see the exact text here What is it you're proposing for thir these two? If what is for 19, I wasn't clear. I beg your pardon. So for 19, you wanted you want to remove the uh, the qualifier if landscaping is prohibited by Orange County Transit Authority on the east side of the wall. So you you would want it to begin then with the applicant shall include architectural details as approved. Is that is correct? That what you're yeah. Looking? So it wasn't so it wasn't just Octa. It was something that we would do. And the other one was uh, if I could find it here. Are you following that, out, uh, Amber? Yeah. And I, I, you know, please advise us if you think it alters um, the meaning of that condition. Yeah, please. Okay. And if it, if it, if you think it does alter the meaning of that condition, um, perhaps um, 
some of that language about architectural detail could be placed in the, the uh, first condition that Jim mentioned, 16? I, I don't think that uh, this condition was not written with the intent to supersede the fact that there's going to have to be design review and approval of the wall um, with architectural details to satisfy the requirement that it be Spanish colonial revival and meet the design guidelines of the general plan. Condition number 19, granted, was before we had the letter from OCTA, which is just an email. It's nothing binding. binding. So, you know, and we're very grateful for that. Um, so that lets us know where that's going. But this was written before we ever knew if they would even consider that. So we had to say, let's say if OCTA did not approve the landscaping at all, we wanted to make the applicant aware that significant architectural details would have to be provided in order to help deter vandalism and provide um, aesthetic movements and visual interest to that wall. I so, so, I just, so staff position is because um, the job of design review is to apply the guidelines. We don't need to say what some of those guidelines are exactly. in, within this yes. um, right. condition. As, as long as it doesn't restrict us to have only vine landscaping, no. and that's that. That, no. that was my concern, or, no. or that, or that that's OCTA the was the only anyway. authority to. And I'll defer to the city or to the city attorney to see if that's how that reads. Is that we could just add in something about um, including other types of architectural details if, if that's what you would like to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I mean, it, from a legal perspective, if it's fine the way it is, I'm, I'm fine. I, with I think it, it could be maybe made a little bit clearer. Okay. You know, so provide architectural interest as well as help deter vandalism. I think it's a pretty good statement. And then you said you had a, a question on 13? Oh, same thing, same same. Thing. Yeah, I think it okay. came out, it was number 13 on the next okay. one, so that would be the same issue. So we're just going to add... The applicant shall include other types of architectural details as approved by the design review subcommittee. That's what I heard. Is that right? That sounds sufficient to me. Okay. Okay. Um, I uh, we have a parent impasse here that was implied in some settlement, not unknown unknown to us until. And I don't know who got the letter on 17 December. I got this at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, anyway, uh, the pr proposed threat of no deal, br a deal breaker or whatever, uh, to pass this tonight with some other language in the financial requirements thing that the city attorney and engineering and build in the city engineer get together and provide some melding of this letter and our per permanent stand of sort I think I think we either meet that can we can either meet the findings or we can't meet okay. the findings and I think I think you know it's up to City Council um, you know to um, deal with the, the litigation issues mm -hmm. uh, yeah personally, I'm I very late it's very late in the game to even try to consider this uh, uh, so yeah uh, I don't think we should consider that letter at all yeah I, we need to just to do what staff's recommendation here I do have a question though if we do uh, do what you're suggesting will this come back to Planning Commission or will not come back to Planning Commission it will not most likely not come back is that correct you mean as far as um, after the design processes right. it will not come back it will um, it's a little bit the reverse of our of our of our process we, we I um, however I think we need to have a, a negative resolution if we um, if we do not um, if we're not in favor of the variance, is that correct? Do we have to have a new resolution for that? that? That's the typical practice. Is if you're not going to um, approve the application for the variance, then there would be a resolution. And I, I suppose, as as a subcommittee, the DRSC could be, you know, guided or be be uh, instructed to make a presentation to planning commission based on what they think should be approved that's that's a possibility Under, as well uh, reports of commissioners could we um, report of commissioners we could uh, we could do that to inform the commission what what had uh, what our recommendation had been and what action was being taken certainly or would it be better in a study session um, either would be fine I mean the planning commission is not going to be taking any action. I'd like, to, see, I'd like to have it as a public uh, public determination and public viewing uh, report of commission, you know, to the commission. 
I think that's something that staff can study just session. note themselves. That doesn't need to be necessarily inserted as a condition of approval or anything like that. So, um, and, and I have a question. We've been talking about conditions of approval. I know some of us had a concern about um, an EIR. Um, if we, if there's a feeling from the majority that we do need an EIR, I'm imagining that's going to affect the um, the wording. <laughs> and, and just to clarify, the fact that. It, if the Planning Commission decides that an exemption isn't necessary, that doesn't mean that it would automatically move up to an EIR. It would just mean that there would have to be some sort of environmental review done, which is usually done through either an initial study or a negative declaration. Mm -hmm. But if there are very significant impacts, then you'd get into an EIR. That's that's mm -hmm. that's fine. I think we should do as, as little as we can get away with and as much as we have to. So. Well, if you go to a mid inject or a review, you're going to this stops until it all gets done. Right. Correct. You you need the full information uh, at the time that you make an uh, approval or a decision on the application. So if you if the Planning Commission believes it needs more information related to environmental impacts, then that information would have to be developed, and then it would have to be presented to the Planning Commission along with these applications. You can't approve these applications if you think you need additional environmental review. And uh, I, I, for one, do not feel that I, although I think, you know, I, I understand your concerns, um, I don't feel that I need additional um, environmental review. I don't know what others I. do. I, I wish I didn't, but I think that there are at least some basic questions that need to be, be asked and looked at, so I, I think we do, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know the order of all the lights. Part. Go ahead, Mike. Michael. That's fine. <clears throat> um, yes, uh, Commissioner Darden, I like your spirit of, of moving this along in a positive way. I think that's that's what we all want, um, and I and I can abide by that as long as we're not uh, approving uh, any variance um, on the height of the wall. But I just want to be rest assured that by doing this, that the things I'm concerned about are still going to be um, active and applied to this project, which is this will get design review, which it hasn't had. It will, in design review, at least be looked at with the local coastal plan requirements so that our review makes sense with that. No, design review would not do that. That's outside the purview of design review, but the Coastal Commission would do that in reviewing this project. Okay, all right. And um, I know we can't we can't specify and we can't ask necessarily for the uh, beach access, but I think maybe somehow we should encourage that city council considers that. I think I think uh, Vania suggested some yeah, language. Yeah, where so we I, wanna, add I just want to make sure all these things are going to happen, and uh, and finally that you said no, we're not we're not changing the language. So I'm 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 liking that a lot better. I'm wondering if um, there's some, if someone wishes to make a motion and we can see uh, if there's support. On the, on the first resolution, attachment one, um, Amber, and I think it was in their letter uh, of today on item B, as in boy. Item uh, B in their letter, I'm sorry? No, uh, no. It's page two of the page two of, 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 of attachment, attachment one. one. Okay. Thanks. So. Before we make a motion on this, I'm looking at it and it says uh, the installation of the transformers will bring the existing 90 space mobile home park in a conformance with building and safety code requirements in regards to increasing the number of transformers exist existing from three to seven. They've already got the seven as far as we're concerned. They have approval for the seven, yes. So this is miswritten. There is no increase as far as this resolution goes. So there is no required by code. They already have the approval for the transformers. So we can just basically mm -hmm. drop, I think, that whole thing from um, the installation yeah. of transformers on. Strike B. And I think we can leave the first sentence. You can't the strike the whole thing. For the type of intensity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't strike the whole thing because it's it's a finding. So. The finding is just asking that is the site suitable for the type 
have use and intensity, and yes, it is. It's already a developed right. site with that use and, and intensity. And then we just take the reference off to the transformers um, number off. Okay. We can keep Hi. the temporary fencing. We'll provide a temporary barrier between the Capstone Service mm -hmm. community and screen. So it's just the reference to the number of transformers approved. Mm -hmm. okay. I think you have a problem here because if you're going to tie these two projects together, the second resolution can't be approved tonight because they're asking for a variance request and you're not willing to grant it, which requires us to come back for either them, A, withdrawing the variance request because they're okay with a six-foot high wall, or we're going to have to come back with a resolution to deny the variance and then approve the conditional use permit for the actual wall itself. So right now those two requests are kind of mingled in one resolution. So we're going to have to pull out the one and then write a separate uh, resolution for denial. And then if you want that wall, you know, the permanent wall to be, you know, tied to the temporary wall, then I don't see how you can approve the temporary one without the other resolution. So we need tab. to, so we need to co um, continue the one uh, and, um, and continue the CUP and then, um, and then you would bring back a, um, a negative uh, resolution for us for the variance. Is that correct? And we would do that all on one night. If right. Or if the applicant didn't have a problem, they could just withdraw the request for the variance if they were happy with the six-foot wall. So it's kind of up to the applicant on how we proceed with the, the resolutions. But either way, we would still need to come back with the revised resolution for the second part. Okay. So, correct, so how, would we, how would we vote on this then? I think you're just voting I mean, to, to continue the item, but giving staff direction as to what they should do. Okay. So, you know, you've, you've talked about the conditions of approval that you want changed. Um, if your your direction to staff is come back with a denial resolution for the variance, I think that's fine as well. It could all be part as one of mo one motion related to both resolutions, or it could be two motions. Yeah. And. Could we take a, a little quick straw vote? Because I'm still not, at least I'm not clear if we've got a majority or not for people who are interested in uh, uh, environmental study. So. You have no objection to our taking a straw vote? Okay. Um, uh, how many of us are concerned um, or feel that the CEQA uh, issues uh, or the environmental study would be a, a barrier to approval? Be. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. How, why don't you word it, Jim? Do, do we need to have some form of environmental study for this wall before we approve it? How many, how many believe that we do? How many believe that we, need, that, we need, that we need that? So two of us? All right. Okay. All right. So is there um, a motion uh, to continue this with some very specific instructions for staff? Somebody would like to take a stab at that? I'll, I'll take a stab at it. I, yep. Thank you, Chair. Amber understands the instructions so far since right. there's been a lot laid on us. Oh, I thought we'd repeat all the instructions. Yes, please do. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> that would be the normal. That would be better. <laughs> so listen carefully and, and correct me at my inevitable mistakes. So, um, so I will move that we uh, continue this item uh, to our next meeting on February. What is the next meeting? on February uh, 18th and give direction to staff to provide a negative declaration for the variance. Negative resolution. Negative resolution. <laughs> negative resolution. <laughs> Thank you. Um, for the variance. Um, uh, Add um, a condition of approval regarding um, uh, Access. Uh, uh, oh, add a condition of approval regarding uh, encouraging beach access as described by Commissioner Barnes. Do, I just do you have sure that? That's just encouraging beach access, not no, requiring beach she, access. Encouraging. encouraging. Okay. Encouraging. And did I miss anything? Do we need um, to say anything more about design review, or is there, is there enough? In there's the, the only thing we needed to say about design review was the additional oh. language um, uh, regarding um, architectural yes. detail. And, and then, you have that? Yes, in the a, landscaping portion. And that staff a modify condition 19 of the first CUP and 13 of the second CUP to include architectural details as approved by the DRSC. And that staff also. There's a modification to right. finding B 
uh, on page two of the resolution. Oh, and first the resolution. staff strikes, was it the first uh, sentence of finding B? Strikes the first sentence? Se uh, second sentence. Second sentence. Second sentence of finding B of the first CUP? And there was a modification right. to number 11, to number 11 um, that uh, Commissioner Brown noted um, commenced within one year. Yeah. Yes, the word are within you, needed to be added to that condition. Mm -hmm. Are you are you clear on on all of those? Yes. Okay. okay. Anything else? Um, attachment two, first page. Attachment um, two, fifth page. First page. Yeah. First, first page. Excuse me for a moment. Um, sound study. Did we talk about that? Yeah, we did. We didn't think we needed it. Sound study. Thought we were going to be adding that. Mm -mm. We didn't discuss no. that. No. Okay. I think that would have been covered in the sequel. Yeah, that that would have been covered in the environmental. So. So I'm sorry. Did you have something? No. Okay. So if there's nothing else, that is the motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, passes 7-0. I do want to thank the Commission on your confidence and design review board. All right, um, and I want to thank the entire commission for um, a, a very detailed discussion of a complex issue and uh, coming to resolution on um, on a uh, motion today. I think it's important that, as we said, that to move in the spirit to move it along, um, and that's important to do. Um, yeah. I did forget something, and I don't know if it matters, but I want to encourage the applicant to get the design in for that wall. ASAP and get this process going so it doesn't drag out for more than a year. So, well, it'll, it's going to require revisions and from what I've seen. So, well, I, I, I hope you feel that uh, it's the aim of the Planning Commission to help move this process along for you as, as much as we're able. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, reports of commissioners. Anything from Coastal Commission? Uh, the agenda is not out yet, but tentatively we'll be discussing uh, the uh, SIP on Pochi Beach, <coughs> some of the improvements in the, in the um, capital improvement program uh, will be on the agenda next week. And then uh, uh, pending on some other issues, possibly uh, potential of something on uh, update from uh, engineering on the sand replenishment <clears throat> and then there's going to be another review in the committee because we have a new committee member of a lot of the uh, documents that are required that the city has to prepare for all our various permits and stuff like that so it'll be a little bit of an educational session on it uh, we'll wait whenever you know the LUP comes back with the ESHAs uh, which is still in the review at the Coastal Commission and then uh, in a future agenda, probably a month after next, we'll be looking at uh, Trafalgar uh, staff uh, efforts to uh, the, the bridge down to Trafalgar Beach, that the Can Trafalgar Canyon runoff area down there. And so that's going to be a city design effort there to, to mitigate that per requirements for the coastal, coastal permits. That's what's kind of coming up. I got a question for you, Don. Um, when I was on the coastal do that. When I was on the Coastal Committee, uh, a plan was put forth, uh, an action plan to uh, really do some proactive problem solving and uh, redesign of poachy drainage. Um, has there been any progress on that? That's exactly what we're going to get briefed on next week. That, that some of the staff efforts uh, in the preparation of the execution of the capital improvement program that was approved by City Council last June. Uh, everything except uh, the data from the sewer plan is not uh, available yet, the sewer study, which would allow diversion of the runoff into the outflow and outfall and just, you know, not in dry up the plant. So that piece, piece is not ready yet, but everything else uh, the staff's going to potentially review with us, the bioswell, diversion, rebuild, and everything's to, to, to decrease runoff in the entire, you know, Pochi water basin there, which basically totals about a half a million gallons a day. Okay. 
by the way, they were they were making improvements on the. I don't know who they were, but they were making improvements on the catwalk today. The uh, it wasn't underwater today. It was slightly underwater, hmm. but uh, looks like they're going to take that plywood out and put in, in Trex planks, Good. which is a good idea. The we had one other issue that we had talked about. Uh, I think we had talked about doing tonight, and I um, I have to admit I did not uh, do my homework. I don't know if others did. We were going to talk about uh, coordinating the uh, sessions that we were attending um, at the Planners Institute, um, and I'm wondering if um, we can take that up at our our next meeting, um, and or if, unless the rest of you have made your choices on courses and want to. I, I haven't looked into it. Maybe we can do it at the end of the study session next time or something. That might be a good thing. Yeah, absent next time. Oh, well, you want to send your uh, the courses that you're interested in? Yeah, I'll try to email you or something like that because uh, I'll be absent uh, for the next planning commission meeting. Okay. We'll just assign you the stuff that nobody else wants to do. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, traffic, the, the first meeting of the tra traffic commission was originally scheduled for this afternoon, but due to a uh, an agenda uh, noticing snafu. It's been rescheduled, and it looks like it'll probably be uh, next Tuesday evening, our first meeting. So, okay. And I think Jim, at um, at some early date, you had suggested um, uh, that um, you uh, report um, to the planning commission just to keep us uh, with something a little more detailed than the average uh, report of commissioners. Um, just to give us an idea of what um, what was happening, um, is that something that uh, you'd still feel comfortable doing for us? You know, giving us a slide or two during reports of commissioners, or if um, if it was necessary, agendizing it after each meeting. Sure, I'd be happy to. Yeah. I guess I, when you made that suggestion, I thought it was a good one because um, it's you know I think you're going to be dealing with a lot of complex issues, and it would be helpful for us. To have an understanding of, um, you know, what some of the ideas you worry that you were looking at, and you know, just be able to uh, absorb them. And, and I, I think it's a good idea. This being the traffic commission as well, you know, that everyone kind of getting getting regular updates. We should try to get the first meeting under our belt so we know we'll get a heading check. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if if and you know maybe you guys talk about the best way to to do an update, whether it's just a single slide and you know one of you walks through it or you walk through it together, that'd be great. Sure. Okay. Thank you. And Bart, did you? Just a quick, oh, just a quick one. Um, since I anticipate a lot of interest, what are our limitations as far as commissioners attending a design review subcommittee meeting as citizens? What's the maximum number we can have? There's there's two sitting members, correct? So there's three okay. members on the board. There's three members on the board, and all three of them are sitting. So and. Uh, Unless it's properly noticed, then it would be um, none would be uh, allowed to sit. No, no uh, just in the in the audience, can they attend and watch? Oh, yes, just to observe. Yes, there's no limitation then Correct. if they just they observe. Very Correct. good. Yeah. Just wanted to talk to the group, and I'll be sending out a uh, email tomorrow. Um, we are going to the League of Cities. I believe it's the fourth, fifth, and sixth of the March and our meeting is on the 4th and we were thinking that would be a little bit too jam-packed of a day but we still have a really important item that we at least one item that we want to review and um, it's somewhat time critical so we're hoping to reschedule it either to the Monday the 2nd or potentially the 9th and so I'm going to pull the group to see how your availability is on either of those two days for a planning commission meeting. Right, in substitute for the one that we would normally have on the 4th. I'm, cu I'm currently available. I may be on, on jury duty um, on the 2nd. It would be less likely that it would be on the 9th. But um, if, you have a, if you have a quorum, um, you know, I would go with okay. the earlier date to accommodate the applicant. Mm -hmm. Either the 2nd or the 9th. And you're going to be sending an email out. Yeah. Yeah, and you'll be talking about what issues are going on. Yeah. So we need to we need to decide before the next hearing because we need to adjourn to the right date. So so if yeah. we all, so if we all just send you independently, we send you uh, emails right. indicating our availability. But I'll send you out the reminder tomorrow. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Well, 
I'd, I'd like to say something about resigning from the alternate position on the design review uh, committee. Um, I really wanted to be on the design review committee, and I think um, I've got a good background for it, and you nominated me and everybody voted for me, and the question is, you know, why, why am I resigning? And there's really two issues, and I just want to be clear about it. One is I didn't realize they were on alternate Wednesdays from our planning meetings. And so that, in a way, compromises every Wednesday for me, potentially. Um, my situation's gotten very unique. I've been retired from the state of California for four years and have been enjoying a lot of time where I could certainly devote to that, that kind of stuff, and I wanted to do it. Uh, but uh, my consulting business has, has gone rocket and I am so busy with it now, and I'm so involved with so many different relationships with professional firms and whatnot that I just couldn't balance it all. And I, I couldn't make the commitment to Julia that I would be definitely available on those days. I just knew that there was potential for conflict and, um, you know, just didn't with the, the <clears throat> four times a, a month situation and and the ramp up on my business, it, uh, it just made it so I didn't think I could do a good job. So I had to pass, and I'm glad that Wayne's okay. doing it. <laughs> well, we, uh, we appreciate it, and I'm sure the public appreciates you um, struggling uh, with the issue of whether you'd be able to give your all. And, of course, it's important that we're all able to do that, and luckily we have a, um, an, an able replacement. So uh, we'll move forward with, um, uh, with, with Wayne as our alternate. And um, 